What's up, everybody? It is Isaiah Tatum, and welcome to the I Live Now show. Y'all, we are in for a treat because we have a special guest here that I'm so excited for you to hear because not only is she here, but you've heard her. Y'all, we have none other than Cece Wyden's in the house today. Hey, welcome, Pastor Cece. <laughs> <laughs> How are you doing? I'm good. Yes, good, you are. Good. Good to be here. How are you? I'm doing exceptionally well. Okay. You know, I just, you know, sometimes you got to pinch yourself, <laughs> right? Because, you know, you, you never know what God is going to do, That's where right. you're going to be, and That's everything right. like that. And I was just like, you watch people on TV, and then you're sitting right next to them. That's right. You know, because you be on right. a lot of TV. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I've been on TV a long time a since long you were time. a baby. Yes, probably yes. before you got here. I'm a 90s baby. Oh, Lord. Yeah, I was on a long time before you came here. <laughs> what the song said, I've been doing this a long time, but I'm not tired yet. Uh, well, I don't know about that, but okay. I'm, not, I'm not done yet. <laughs> <laughs> I won't say I'm not tired, but not, I'm not done. Not done yet. <laughs> yes. Pat Cece, you are coming from a great year. Mm -hmm. Like a few months ago, you mm -hmm. just won your 15th Grammy. 15th, yeah. F yeah, not five, <laughs> one five. 15th Grammy. Right. Like, but not only that, you're in the likes of Alicia Keys and Adele, and you all are tied wow. for the, um, the most Grammys won by a female artist. Like, what does that feel like? Wow, it's an honor. It's mm -hmm. an honor. Um, grew up watching the Grammys, yeah. you know, and so I remember getting my first Grammy for for Always. I think was my first mm. one, and uh, now to have fifteen is pretty amazing. <laughs> I mean, it just shows the fa faithfulness of God, but but also the power of music and mm -hmm. how when people embrace what you do and allow what you do to be a soundtrack of their lives, right. and it just shows the the appreciation for what you put out there, you know? Mm -hmm. So it means a lot, it's very humbling. Yeah. Um, Cause there's a lot of great music out here that never really get the chance to be heard right. by everybody. It's not because it's not good, you right. know? So I don't take it lightly um, to be acknowledged by my peers and to have the honor of having so many Grammys at this point. Uh, 15. Yeah, 15. <laughs> and and I'm, I'm blown away. I mean, when I won the three, Mm. Um, earlier this year, uh, yeah, I was speechless. Yeah. I wasn't expecting it, and uh, but yet it happened. So I'm very grateful, very humble, uh, and I believe it just gives me more influence. Mm -hmm. Yes, it does. And it, one thing that I loved about it is like everybody in the same category as you mm -hmm. were like secular, mm -hmm. and here you are, gospel. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like, what in the world? That's exciting, too. Yeah. It, it lets you know that people embrace gospel music. Mm -hmm. You know, they, they're entertained by it, mm -hmm. but they're also moved by it. They're blessed by it. Mm -hmm. they, I believe people understand the power of gospel music. Yeah. That is more than entertainment. Right. And it lets you know that people embrace it who would normally go to church. Right. You know, it's not just for people of faith. Mm -hmm. um, of course, the aim is to get people to become people Come of on. faith, but um, it ministers peace and it passes the ear and it touches the heart yeah. and, and people, people embrace it. So that's encouraging to know that I could be in a category of, like you said, those incredible voices and women yeah. that you named and I'm singing gospel music mm -hmm. full time, you know, uh, it's encouraging to know that people want to hear good news right. through music. Absolutely. And that's, that's one of the things that I love about it is that the people want to hear it. Mm -hmm. And you have been consistent. I hear it's coming up on 40 years since you've been. Yeah, seen. it's probably past that, Zaya. <laughs> oh, my God. I think it's over 40 years. BB and I started uh, whew, on PTL. I'm trying to see when we put out our first record. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, I was probably about 17 years old. Ooh, yeah. yeah, so it's been about, about probably right at 40 years, maybe a little bit more, because mm -hmm. I'm 57 now, so do the math. <laughs> uh, soon to be 58, so, so yeah, it's been a long time. Absolutely, mm -hmm. and you've been consistent. Mm -hmm. You've been so consistent that the people who are in the music industry, because we know that the music industry can be dark. Yeah, for sure. And for you to be a light, because to see those people 
come to you and call you mm -hmm. to be like, hey, I'm going through something. They're like, call CC. Mm -hmm. I'm going through something else. Call CC. Mm -hmm. Like, how do you stay consistent in the matter of that those people who have so much influence look up to you and look to you when trouble comes? Wow. First of all, that's a compliment. Um, but consistency, it could just, I think it just comes from my walk with the Lord, mm -hmm. you know. Um, I, I continue to do what I did before I, I received all the Grammys. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It, it was always been for me, my relationship with Jesus. Um, I'm a believer who happens to sing, you oh, know? Oh, say that and, again. Yeah, I'm a believer who happens to sing, not a singer <sighs> who's a believer. Um, mm -hmm. Because when you're a believer, then you, you live a life in the way that your aim is to please God. Mm -hmm. Your aim is to walk out the word. Um, yeah. Do we miss the mark? Yes, thank God for grace and mercy. <laughs> but but that's your aim. Mm -hmm. And so my relationship with him really leads me in in the work that I do. Mm -hmm. And it gives me the boundaries for my life. Mm. You know, the word of God will tell you what to do and what not to do. Not to do. And it doesn't matter if you're on stage or off stage. Mm -hmm. um, being consistent and just living a life that pleases him. Uh, helps you to be consistent in everything you do. Wow. So, so I'm hoping that. I mean, I, I know that's it. It's not. That I've, I've heard better voices every day. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> uh -huh. um, but when you have a lifestyle behind the voice, mm. it really does matter. It it brings. It shines a lot brighter. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Whatever you're doing, it brings a greater impact. Right. And um, and so I'm just grateful for the way I was raised. Mm -hmm that my parents told us to live what we preach. Mm -hmm. And they really emphasized the importance of having a real relationship with Jesus yeah. and being steady in that, you know? It's mm -hmm. all about loving God and loving people. Yeah. And that's what I want people to feel when I sing. That's what I want people to see mm -hmm. when I meet them. Yeah. And, and, and that's what I want people to remember. Mm -hmm. Way after the song is gone, yeah. remember the power of God and what you experienced um, when I was singing. Right. That's legacy. Um, I think I heard somebody, I don't, I can't recall who it was, but it's like legacy. I want to say it was probably Maya Angelou. Mm -hmm. She's like legacy is the impact that you leave on the person and how you treated them. Yeah. Yeah. I think I've heard, um, where she said, people don't remember what you told them. They remember how you made them feel. Yeah. That's exactly what it yeah. is. Yeah. And, and just to, because I've known you and Pastor Alvin and everybody for about 10 years now. Yeah. And it's hard, I, and I hate to say this, but it's like it's hard to see somebody live what they preach, mm. which is so crazy. But like Pastor Lisa, I remember we did the Dove Awards. Right, right. You sang with us. <laughs> yeah. Isaiah's a wonderful singer, everybody. <laughs> no, it really is. He really is a good singer. <laughs> He's a good singer. So, yes, you've been on the worship team and you sang behind yeah. me quite a few times. So. Yeah. so, just even with that, it's just like you're at the Dove Awards, mm -hmm. you share your platforms, mm -hmm. and you live what you preach because the next day mm -hmm. after the Dove Awards, you were at Life Group, mm -hmm. tired, and you were uh -huh. teaching the, the married couples. Yeah. Like, what in the world? <laughs> it's like, because somebody could be like, most people be like, man, I'm CC Winans. I can go home. Right. I don't have to do this. Right. But your heart yeah. and your humility says, no matter how tired I am, I am going to go feed God's people because this is what I was created to do. Right. Like, That's what is the importance is. of that, of humility and, you know, like feeding God's people? Well, I, I think, I think the humility comes when you continue in the things that God has called you to do. Mm -hmm. Love comes, forgiveness comes, everything that Jesus gives us and all the gifts that we get with the Holy Spirit, mm -hmm. they all come and they're activated when you walk in obedience. Okay. Okay. You know, I always tell people when I stand before the Lord, he's not going to ask me how many Grammys I had or uh -oh. how many awards I had, how many right. stellars or how many, you know, or that my name is on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. Thousands of dollars. Right. All uh -huh. of that is not going to count, right? <laughs> right. So keeping things simple is just, first of all, I really believe in the local church. Mm -hmm. I know what it did in my life. Um, being being submitted, being planted, being yeah. in community, mm -hmm. because that's really real life. Yes. 
you mm -hmm. know, getting on stage and having a good time and yeah. ministering with all the lights and the outfits and all of that, <laughs> you know, that's not really real life. Oh, you know, come you come on. back and you, when I come off the stage, you know, I've been married for 38 years to yes, so a yeah. wonderful guy who I heard you interviewed. Um, <laughs> and, move. you know, being a mom, you know, I used to come off the award shows and go mm -hmm. get my babies and they, they would throw up on me. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> oh, you're good they could dress. care less that you just, yeah, they could care less <laughs> about all that. So it's real life that really matters mm -hmm. because you've heard of famous people, mm -hmm. rich people yeah. with no peace. Oh, and you know, with no peace, no peace and no hope because you don't get peace and hope from that. Mm -hmm. And you know that that was the question I wanted to ask you because everybody see the glitz yeah. and the glamour and right. the lights and the cameras yeah. but they don't see that people are behind closed doors have no peace right. they are suicidal right. they are like what do you tell the people about fame and fortune like let's talk about that because I know there'll be a, like a lot of artists watching mm -hmm. to be like oh I aspire to be on the stage mm -hmm. Like, let's talk about the fame and the fortune because you've reached every plateau of what an artist can do, mm. you know? Like, yeah. seriously, you know? But most people don't see the other side of fame and fortune. Right. Tell us about that. Well, fame and fortune is just that, you know? And it's, 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 it doesn't carry substance. Mm. You understand what I'm saying? Yes, ma'am. Um, there's been times when I've walked through my house and I've seen all the awards and my heart is really heavy and sad. Mm. There's, there's nothing those awards can do for me right. during those times. You know what I'm saying? Yes, and so life happens to everybody, but it's not like it doesn't happen to me, but I know what to do when it happens. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I know to get on my knees. I know to cry out. I know to get a scripture and to confess the word of God. Mm -hmm. I know to call my mom or one of the mothers of the church or mm -hmm. know to get with my husband and pray. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? That's, that's the thing that gets you through the hard times. It's right. not fame and fortune. Okay. You know what I'm saying? So it's nothing wrong with aspiring to that, but you have to have character. Mm -hmm. You have to have discipline. You have to have you know, something of substance in your life in order to really experience abundant life. Yeah. You know, but abundant life doesn't come from fame and fortune. Mm. Fame and fortune is great. Hey, it's, it's fun, yeah. but it is not gonna see you through bad times. Come it cannot on. minister to your heart and your spirit and your mind because demonic spirits are real, mm -hmm. just like angels and the spirit of God is real. Yes, ma'am. And, and we all have to fight in the spirit world. And unless you're equipped, mm -hmm. With, with the spiritual equipment and weapons that you need to right. have, then um, you won't make it, mm. you know? And you can have all the money in the world in the bank, and mm. that does not heal a broken heart. Oh, wow. That is so, <laughs> we're gonna clap it up. <laughs> Yeah. Right, I, I, I clap it up because you clap know, it up. Clap I never heard of clap it. Really? <laughs> I'm a millennial. Thank you. <laughs> but okay, well, clap it up. Clap it up. You clap it up, right? Because I mean, I come from a generation where it's microwave, uh -huh. where it's Instagram, uh, yeah. where it's Facebook, where yeah, it's everything like everything quick. Everything quick, <laughs> you know. And it's just like homeboy, homegirl. Mm -hmm. My brother, my sister, like none of this. It actually leads to death. Right. You know, it actually leads to a sense of not belonging because you're trying to find something right. that through that so you can feel loved. Right. So you can feel like somebody mm -hmm. when we're already Already back. somebody. We're already Come somebody. On. Come on. Oh, um, clap up. Clap, clap, clap up. Clap it up. <laughs> clap it up. That was good. Clap it up. You learn fast. <laughs> <laughs> no, but that's true. That's so good what mm -hmm. you just said. Um and knowing, having the Lord in your life, because what you're saying is you're looking for love in all the wrong places. Yes, ma'am. And you're trying to become something that God already created you to be. Come on. And you have to, in order to know who you are, See, I don't. I, I didn't know who I was until I knew who he, who he was. Okay. You know, when mm -hmm. you really have a relationship with God, that's when you begin to understand who you are. Mm -hmm. You know, That's really it's good. almost like going to the manufacturer. If you mm -hmm. buy something and you want to know how it works and what it's for, you have to go to the manufacturer. Right. And, and that's where a lot of us mess up. Yeah. You know, we lean to our own understanding or we're trying to be something uh, because somebody else is something, but that's right. not who you were wired up to be, you yes, know? So understanding who you are is huge, mm -hmm. but you're only going to understand who you are when you get a relationship with him, when you understand who right. he is. Right. Right, which leads me to that other question because you've been doing this since 17. Yeah. 
Uh huh. PTL, yeah. praise the Lord. Yeah. Uh huh. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> like, tell us about like some of those moments where you didn't know who you were, and like, what are like those deals that you're like, man, we shouldn't have never did that, or we should have never signed that. Like, what were like those oh, mistakes? God. That you know, because like again, there's so many mistakes. Well, <laughs> choose one. So many mistakes. They choose one. <laughs> or whichever um, but ones. but knowing who I am, I have to say, thank God, I fell in love with Jesus at a very early age. Mm -hmm. Um, probably about eight, nine years old. You know, yeah. really just fell in love with His presence. Mm -hmm. uh, my favorite person to hang out with was my grandmother. Really? Uh yeah. So. <laughs> So because I had the Lord in my life, I really didn't go through times when I didn't know who I was. Okay. Um, I was very comfortable in the background. Mm. Um, I love to sing, but singing in the choir or in the background is fine with me. Yeah. I didn't. I never had to come out front. Really? Um, no. With the voice like Oh that? my God. I mean, come on. It's, it's, it's great voices everywhere. Right. Some are in front, some are singing background, mm -hmm. you know, and, and my whole family, we love to sing, but but being out front, I didn't have to do that. I would have been fine. Mm -hmm. But but God had other plans, clearly. Right. Yes, He did. Um, so so knowing who I was, understanding because I was never in the industry to be a star. Hmm. I was just there because my prayer to, had always been, Lord, Your perfect will be done in my life. Okay. Now, if You want me out front, then okay. Yeah. But if not, that's not what I want. I only mm -hmm. want what You want. Yeah. And when you keep that straight, then you kind of remain grounded mm -hmm. in who you are. You don't allow the industry to make you into something else. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? Because I, I never ran after that. Good. I, and I'm not trying to get credit for that. I just, to today, you know, I was yeah. talking to you today. What am I doing here today? I'd rather be at home. Right. You know what I'm saying? I love you. <laughs> yes, you do. But, but BB used to always say, are you going to come? Or are you going to not come because you just want to stay at home? <laughs> 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 Whitney used to call me the reluctant star. Really? Yeah, because I was I was always happy at home and mm -hmm. um, doing the simple things in life. But God had more things for me, you know, yeah. a different path. And so I'm here because this is where He wants me to be. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So I've always been pretty stable in that. But making mistakes? Mm -hmm. Oh my God! <laughs> when you said sign something, I'll never forget. Bibi and I were about to sign this. Um, manager contract okay. and the contract was supposed to be for five years. Wow. And so I'm in the office with him and the, and, and the manager who mm -hmm. I really love. Uh -huh. um, but I just felt this thing, it, I, you know, now I know it's the spirit of God, but mm -hmm. it was so heavy that I was like, I just don't feel like I'm supposed to sign this. Mm -hmm. And so the guy looks at me, he said, well, I just can't sign one of y'all. I have to sign both of y'all. Sure. And BB was like, come on, come on, go ahead, it's okay. And I was just like, I don't know. And I started crying. I'm crying in the <laughs> office. I'm feeling like I must be looking crazy, mm -hmm. you know. And so through the tears, I was like, okay. <laughs> and I don't think the ink dried good because... before I realized, oh, my God, yeah. why did I do that? Mm -hmm. And, man, that was a life lesson. Really? that God never had to teach me again. Oh. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But I I ignored his voice and I went ahead and did it anyway. Mm -hmm. And it ended up being a bad, big mistake. Mm -hmm. And later on, BB was like, you shouldn't have signed it. Why did you sign it? He's going to blame it on yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. And I was listening to him. <laughs> but, but you're going to make mistakes. And mm -hmm. God is, I mean... The Bible said, when you um, buffed about for your own fault, take it patiently. Ooh. So we had to walk it through and we had to honor our side, even though it was not a good deal mm. for us, you know? Wow. And, uh, but I learned that to listen to the voice of God. Yeah. yeah. No matter what everybody else say, mm -hmm. no matter how it might make you look, right. listen to the voice of God and you'll be okay. Yeah. And so that really taught me. I was very young at that time. We were both very young mm -hmm. and very impressionable that way. You mm -hmm. know, this is a big time person and you should do it. Yeah. But you gotta listen to the voice of God, you know, mm -hmm. no matter what. And that was a hard lesson to learn because um, we had to walk through it. Yeah. But I'm grateful because I never did that again. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> you know, when you hear that small voice, it's like, you know what? Right. Because I tell people, anytime you're rushed to do something, wow. it's not him. Okay. Just sit there for a minute. Because if it's yours, it's yours. Mm -hmm. So if you need to go pray about it, 
yeah. and take a couple of days before you do it, right. go pray about it. Don't let the pressures, don't let people make you feel pressured. Come on. You know? That's right. Because that's not the way the Holy Spirit works. That's not the way he works. Like, it, it's something about, and like you said, before you even knew that it was the voice of God, mm -hmm. there's something in our gut. They just say that yeah. gut feeling of just mm -hmm. like, mm -hmm. and, you know, and also Pastor Alvin said, anytime that you make a decision, peace will go before and peace will go for afterwards. Mm -hmm. so and true. How I, I use that like in me in my life, or like if I'm about to make a deal, you mm -hmm. know, say so do a house or something like that, mm -hmm. I'm just like, does this, do I have peace right. before? Right. And I think that is so crucial, especially for those who are wanting to do great things, yeah. those who have dreams, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Because one thing about the I Live Now show is like, yo, you have a purpose. Yeah. You have dreams That's because, right. like, God says, if you delight yourself in me, I will give you the desires, desires of, your heart. of your heart. And most people think, that those desires are going to be like, oh, if I, just as long as I spend time with him, mm -hmm. whatever I want mm -hmm. will happen. Mm -hmm. That's not what that is. No. The delighting fixes our motive in our heart there you go. to line up with his will. His will, his you know? heart. So his that's what desires. you said. It's just like, yo, before you make a decision, mm -hmm. even if it's with your dream, mm -hmm. even if it's with a big time person, that's like go right. delight yourself in the Lord yep. and pray. And, yep. make and sure he said, you know. acknowledge him in all your ways and he'll direct your path. Mm -hmm. You know, so acknowledge him. Spend time in his presence. Say, Lord, is this what you want? This is what I want. And yeah. God, you know, we can be honest with God. Right. You know? Right. Um, like you said, he gives us dreams. He gives us the ability to get wealth. He, mm -hmm. All of those things. But when you acknowledge him, he promised. He said, I shall direct your path. Yeah. You know? But you have to take out the time and acknowledge him. Got to take the time out. Mm -hmm. So, if I see, I, um, like I said, it's so crazy of just full circle things. It's just, it's yeah. just so crazy because in elementary. Okay. <laughs> when I found out I could sing, right? Right. We sang you and Whitney song, Count On Me. Really? Yes. Oh, wow. <laughs> in elementary? In elementary. Wow. Like, okay. you know, I was like, what, fourth or fifth grade or whatever. Wow. And, you know, me and this girl sang it, you know. Okay. Um, you know. And what part like, did you do? Did you do, did y'all change up the parts? Or? Um. I did. Um, did you do Whitney's part? Did you do my part? I think I did your part. Okay. Yeah. Okay. But we did a count on me. The thing yeah. Me, the <laughs> but my favorite part of that song is count on, count, count on, on, count, count on. on. <laughs> How far <laughs> was that? Like count on me, but that song right there, just even seeing your relationship. Yeah, yeah. We had but, fun doing that song. Yeah, because I was like, we had fun with that the end part. <laughs> you know, so, so I can only imagine. Yeah. But Pastor, you know, like just industry, just talking about that, but just even life in general mm -hmm. of how you were a friend. Yeah. Like yeah. you were, you, I mean, you and Whitney were like yeah. this. Yeah. And to even sing that song, you could feel like the real, true sisterly love. Mm -hmm. And then I'll go back and watch the videos. Hold up the light. <laughs> oh, <laughs> on the God, words. On yes. the words. Hold up the light. Hold up the we light. You were singing so high. Yes, oh, you, you were soprano. I told you were soprano. No, You'd be I out here cheating in alto. Used to be. Used yeah. to be. You were soprano. <laughs> you know, you still got it. <laughs> but, yeah. you know. Yeah, a lot of fun. To see you be a friend, because the industry, as we mm -hmm. say, has its good days mm -hmm. and its great aspects, mm -hmm. and it has its bad aspects mm -hmm. of it. And you walked with Whitney through a time that mm -hmm. nobody really, like you even you know, told the situation of like, well, Whitney would come here mm -hmm. and live with you yeah. and be, you know, saying live downstairs and everything yeah. like that. My question to you, you know, it's like, what do you do when you want the best for somebody, but it don't turn out that way hmm. as a friend. I mean, it's just, it's hard. Mm -hmm. It's hard. It's, it's not an easy thing. You know, I still miss her to this day. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, you love hard and you want what's best for somebody, but you can't make their choice, your, their choices for them. Mm -hmm. You know, you pray and you, and you try to be there for them. Um, just like you would need them to be there for you. Whitney right. was there for me in a lot of ways. Oh, you know? yes, ma'am. In a lot of ways. I remember the time we performed on the 
the Grammys with myself, her, and Shirley Caesar. Mm. The only reason they did the gospel segment was because Whitney decided she would do it. Really? Yeah, they were like, if y'all, if Whitney's not doing it, we're not doing it. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so a lot of people don't know Whitney was there for us mm -hmm. in a lot of ways. So it's not just one way, yeah. you know. Um, but I was there for her as much as I possibly could be there. Well, I shouldn't say that because I think you, you can always do better. Sure. But I wanted to be there as much as I possibly could. Mm -hmm. um, and so, so it's not easy. That's all I can say. It's not easy. God yeah. is always faithful. You don't. We will never understand everything down here. Right. Um, but we know He's faithful. Mm -hmm. You know. I know that she really loved the Lord. She had a place in her heart for Him. Mm -hmm. But that it was a hard life. Yeah. You know. I told her years ago. We did a we did an interview for Jet magazine. Yeah. And one of the questions they asked me was, um, what would you want that Whitney has, you know? Mm. And before I could speak, Whitney was like, she don't want nothing I got. <laughs> 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 she hollered it out so quick. I was like, girl, shut up. <laughs> and I was like, I wish I could eat anything and still be skinny. So she could eat well, anything that she wanted to eat and wouldn't gain a pound. Sure. Um, white castles and all, she would just eat whatever. Uh, but why? The reason why she said that was because I was close enough to her to see how hard it was to mm -hmm. be that famous. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. I used to think, oh, being famous would be good. You know, yeah, it is no joke. Yeah, you you, you really. You know, you really don't have a life of your own. You have to fight to have a life for yourself. Right. Yeah, and so she knew I saw that up close and personal. Mm -hmm. And so that's why she was like, oh, she don't want this, you know. Yeah. Because it's it's a lot. And, in, and, and unless you are just covered with people that's going to make sure you are spending time in the Word, yeah. that you're being really uh, surrounded by those who are interested you know, and care for your soul, mm -hmm. you know, and not just what you can do yeah. because this industry can burn you out really quickly if you yeah. don't have that balance. And so she, it was a lot. Mm -hmm. It was a lot being Whitney Houston. Yeah. You know, I, uh, mm. so, but yeah, it broke my heart and um, still can't believe it. Yeah. But, but she's gone and I trust God, you know, that, that he was with her, mm -hmm. you know. How do you, how do you deal with the grief? You know, I know we trust God. Right. You know what I'm saying? But to lose your friend. Right. Your sister. Right. But not only that, Pastor C, it's just like because people need to hear that are going through, that have lost a mother, that have yeah. lost a sister. Grief is have, real. Yeah. And, but not only lose her, but like a few years later, lose Bobby her daughter. Bobby Chris, my goddaughter. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, like, walk us through how you had to process that because. People look to you to be the strong one, mm -hmm. but now you need somebody to be the strong one for you. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So like walk us through like that friendship, that sisterhood, even that God mommy. Oh yeah. Um, I mean, it's like whenever you lose a loved one, you know, mm -hmm. I lost my oldest brother, I lost my dad. Uh, you don't know how really you're gonna make it. Yeah. But I remember my sister asking me that question. I shared this a lot. The day after my brother Past, you know, Cece, how are we gonna make it? You yeah. know, we had never lost a sibling. I was like, Debbie, I don't know how we're gonna make it. Yeah. <laughs> but I do know who does know. Yeah. You understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And that's where having that relationship with God, you don't have to know everything, you just know that He's there. Yeah. And He you know that He's got you. And so I was like, I don't know how He's gonna get us through this. Yeah. But He's gonna get us through it. And and I just wanna encourage people to take one day at a time. A mm -hmm. lot of times we if we allow our minds to go there, it's like, how are we gonna make it? you know, next week yeah. or three months from, from now. You just have to trust the Lord daily, mm -hmm. you know. Have people praying for me. Yes, ma'am. Uh, you're going to cry. Mm -hmm. You got to feel the pain. You're going to feel the pain. You don't mm -hmm. act like it doesn't hurt. It hurts. Right. Um, I was in total shock when I heard it. I had just talked to Whitney the, the, the earlier part of that week. I think I talked to her on that Monday. Mm -hmm. And then that weekend, she went to California to do Clive's show. And um, at the Grammys, mm -hmm. pre-Grammys. And uh, and I got the news. Ashley called me actually, mm. and uh, I was like, "What? That that's not true." Yeah. I was like, "That's not true." Because again, I had been with her hearing so many things in the news, right. and it was so not not the, the truth. truth, right? <laughs> oh God, that was a part of her life. <laughs> they would say she's in Paris and she would be in Florida. And right. It's like, oh my God, <laughs> they can actually get away with this. Right. 
Um, so I, I just knew it wasn't true. Mm -hmm. And then I called Pat, her sister-in-law, who I knew was out there with her, and I called her and all I said was, Pat, is it true? And she got quiet and I just said, oh my God. Mm. So I sat down because I was actually about to celebrate a friend's birthday at a restaurant and I just went outside and I was just like, I can't believe it. And so they took me home. Yeah. And I saw it, it was all over the news by mm -hmm. that time. And I just, you just kind of, when, when grief hits you, you kind of go through a time of unbelief for yep. a minute. It's You're kind of in shock. Right. <laughs> and then it's just like, wow, this is real, you mm -hmm. know? And so cried, prayed, cried, prayed. Wasn't that what Donnie said? Yep. <laughs> prayed, <laughs> prayed, and cried, and prayed. Pray and but, but it works because the yeah. Holy Spirit will begin to lift your heart. Mm -hmm. You know, God is faithful and he'll carry you through. And a lot of times, now that I've lost a few people in my life and I never want to lose another one, right. I think a lot of times you're able to keep going through the memories that you've had with mm. them. You know, so does it hit me sometime and it's really sad? Yes. And what do I do? I cry and I thank God for the time I had with her, you yeah. know, and then trust God that he, he took care of her. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? Um, but then I think about the memories. Yeah. And it feels like, I mean, they'll always be a part of me. Mm -hmm. You know, her, Bobby Chris, my brother, my... My dad, to this day, I laugh at stuff I think about with him. Um, and so, yeah, God takes you through the grief. You have to remember that he bore our grief for yeah. us. So those who are going through grief, just remember God is there yeah. and that he's there to lift that heavy load, but you got to give it to him. Yeah. So don't try to hold it in, cry out, but cry out to him. Yeah. Because he knows how to take that heart and how to mend it and how to give you the strength just day by day. Mm -hmm. And before you know it, it's like, okay, I'm going to make it, you know? Yeah. And, uh, but he's faithful. That's the only thing I can say. Grief is a hard thing to explain, mm -hmm. but um, walking with it with him, but also with people yeah. is real important that you don't try to just hold it in or handle it on your own. Absolutely. Um, so yeah, Come that's, on. that's it. I appreciate that because we live in a society now that says hold everything in, mm -mm. look perfect, mm -mm. and put a smile on your face, all while you're just like, I'm, I'm, I'm about to burst, I'm right. about to burst, I'm about to burst. And so right. I appreciate that honesty. Oh yeah, you gotta cry out. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> literally. I mean, I mean like ugly cry. <laughs> My my kids, my husband know it's like if I'm somewhere wailing, they know okay, mama's in the room wailing, <laughs> you know, for whatever the situation is, because that's that's what the Bible tells us to do. Mm -hmm. You know, he said many are the afflictions of the righteous, but he'll deliver you out of them all. He hears the cries of of his people and his mm -hmm. children, and so when you need when you need something, then you act like you need it, right. you know, and and really he's the only one who can fix it. Mm -hmm. You know, and he'll bring people into your life, like counseling is good and a multitude of counseling. There's safety, Come there's on. there's peace in that, but it's being led by the Lord. But but really, it, it really starts and stops with him. Mm -hmm. Everything in life starts and stops with him. Come on. You're going to make it through the good times and the bad times with him. Yeah. Y'all heard it. You got to start and stop with him. <laughs> <laughs> Don't start and stop with yourself. <laughs> oh, oh, no. Absolutely not. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely not. Well, I appreciate that, Pastor Cece. And, you know, just even now, like even death, it's just like, what is that? Those memories. Yeah. And those legacies. Yeah. Like that's legacy of what people think about you because Praise you God. just became a grandmommy. Oh. <laughs> Life just keeps getting better. I'm telling you. It keeps getting better, <laughs> huh? That, yes, I'm a grandma. That's are. like my favorite thing. Yes, it yes, is. Yes, yes. You have me cracking up because, <laughs> <laughs> because you're like, hey, I get a second chance. I get a second I, yeah, chance. I get a second I get chance. A second. Yes. Because, As parents, we make mistakes. Right. Because, you know, like you being on the road, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? And you had Ashley and Alvin, mm -hmm. you know, so, and a marriage to try to balance that. Mm -hmm. And it's just like, how do I be CC Winans, but also be mama mm -hmm. afterwards and then to be like did you feel like you kind of missed out on their lives did you kind of feel like that you didn't get a chance to really be there or like what was it well I, I you try to balance it out and i think i did pretty good balancing it out were there moments that i missed mm -hmm. because i was away yes but i think i don't think i missed out on much more than any working mother mm -hmm. you know um you have some mothers who have the luxury and the setup where they don't have to work, which I think is always the best. Yeah. Um, but I also knew that God had called me to do this. And 
down through the years when I, when I would hit tight spots and, and, the, and the tension and the challenge of career and family, I would always look to him mm -hmm. and say, now you've called me to do this, but I know you didn't call me to win the world and lose my family. Ooh. So what do I do here? Mm -hmm. You know, I'm called to be a wife and a mother first mm -hmm. before a career. Wow. And so there's been times when I would turn down things on the career because I knew I needed to be at home. But again, wow. I went to the Holy Spirit and said, now what do I do? Mm -hmm. You know, one time, really with Kirk, he asked me to go out on tour with him. And um, my kids were at the age of, you know, the age where you kind of, they kind of lose their minds, you know, <laughs> preteen, you know, it was the like, I could easily leave and come back and they would be somebody else, right. you know? So I didn't feel easy, I didn't feel a peace about leaving them. Mm. And the Lord um, had brought Chandra Jameson into my life at the time and yeah. she was there. I decided to take them out of school and homeschooled them mm -hmm. and she taught them. And so we all got on the road, mm. you know? Alvin, my kids, we all got on the road and we did that tour together. Mm -hmm. And uh, they came home and they stayed in homeschool for a little bit and then I kicked them out and they went back to school. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I say that because you have to continue to balance it. Mm -hmm. Is it possible? Yes. But it's only possible if that's what God has called you to do. Mm. You know, there's been times even when we started the church, I was like, I wouldn't plan on pastoring, you know. Right. But I didn't record, I didn't record anything for probably eight years. Mm. Because again, I belong to him. Ooh. So if he wants me to sing, I'll sing. But if he wants me to preach or if he wants me to stay home, whatever he wants me to do is what I want to do. Yeah. So I was away from the industry, not totally away because I would go out and do spot days here and there, but I didn't really do anything for about eight years, mm -hmm. you know? And I came back and did, um, Alvin did the record of yeah. Let Them Fall In Love. Uh, yeah. And the people received me and we, I think we got two, two Grammys for that yes, record. You did. You know? <laughs> um, Alvin and Dewan um, mm -hmm. produced that record. Well, Alvin produced most of it, but Dewan was part of that. Yeah. And uh, God is just faithful, but, but your family comes first. Mm. I've never been confused about that. Okay. I even remember when um, Alvin and I were dating and we were about to get married. Mm -hmm. And I remember my brother Marvin saying, now, you know you're the wife, right? And I'm like, yeah. Oh. And he was like, well, you know, if he decides that it, he doesn't want you to sing or be on the road, then you can't, be, you can't sing and be on the road. Mm. And I was like, yeah, I know that. Mm. You know, because God has an order. Yes, he does. And he blesses those who stay in order. Mm. <laughs> so when I decided to get married, I realized that I had a head now. Yeah. And I have to submit under that. And mm. I'm just grateful that he's never, he's never ever hindered me or stopped me from doing anything wow. that, that God wanted me to do, mm. you know? Yes, but you got a so, great husband. I got a great one. You got a great I one. I got a great one. Huh? You got a great on one. Come on, he's a good yeah. man. <laughs> Absolutely. And Pastor, just even with that, mm -hmm. because you know my generation, and some of them, <laughs> you know, because like you know, you love doctor. You know, I call you love doctor because you've been trying to get me married yeah, for so long. Yeah, of course, it's gonna happen. It's gonna happen. Very I know it is. You've been Jesus trying name. to get me married. <laughs> get you married. Hey, because marriage is marriage is great. It is great. And you said something because when people hear that S word, especially women, especially uh -huh. in my generation, uh -huh. that submission and that submit word. That's right. They be like, uh uh, I'm independent. And they'll go eat, they'll go sing Beyonce and Destiny's Child. Oh, no, no. Oh, God didn't make God us did to be independent. It. Right. What do you say to this generation? Because there is an order. Right. And it's not about control and it's not no. about, you know, like, oh, you're under me. I right. will tell no, you no, what no. to do. Right. Like, what do you say to my generation who do not say, who says, like, I'm not submitting, I'm independent, mm -hmm. but we're missing out on so many families right now. That's right. You know, like what I think do you you've say? already said it. You've already said it. We're missing out on a lot <laughs> because we are, we're taking our cues from the world, mm. from our culture, when the world should be taking them from us. Yeah. You know, so the word of God, we don't have to guess. We don't have to wonder. All we have to do is look at that word and pattern our lives after that word. Right. And so God honors order. Mm -hmm. And if you want what's if you want God's best for your life, mm -hmm. then you have to line up with his way of doing things. Yeah. And so I, I encourage women to walk in the word of God and to embrace order, embrace submission, mm -hmm. you know? And, and, and when you have a man of God, yeah. 
then he's going to love you the way Christ loved the church. Mm -hmm. So Christ doesn't beat us up. He doesn't make <laughs> us feel less than. He right. does the opposite. He builds us up. Mm -hmm. You know, and so men have to understand what that word means as well. Come on. You know? Come on. Um, submission is a good thing because now every, the man is covered. The Bible says that he's covered by Christ. Mm -hmm. and, and then the, he covers the woman. The woman's covered by the man. And then the children... They got the hookup because everybody's in order. <laughs> Clap it up. <laughs> Clap it up. Clap it up for order. <laughs> but order is yeah. a blessing. But order is a blessing. There's yeah. protection there. There's mm -hmm. been times where I'm tired, where my husband's there, he's praying for me, you know. Mm. And and so I never got it confused, you know. Right. I'm CC Winers, but when I come in that house, yeah. I'm, I'm Sister Love. Sister Love. You know what yeah. I'm saying? But but there's peace in that. There's mm. there's um. There's uh, there's joy in that. There's protection. Submission yeah. to me means protection. Even even pastors, you know, having a good pastor. I've always had pastors in my life mm -hmm. that not they didn't tell me what I wanted to hear. They told me what I needed to hear. Sure. You know, but it was protection in that. It mm -hmm. wasn't always what I you know liked. But it's like okay, if y'all said it, I'm gonna do it. You know. Yeah. And when you honor God's people and you honor those that God has put over you. God is going to honor you. That's right. It's going to honor you. Yeah. Pastor CC, for somebody who has so many accomplishments, so many things in this world, mm -hmm. you know, everything that people can imagine, mm -hmm. what legacy do you want to leave? What do you want people to say about you? What do you want Wyatt to oh, say about his grandmommy? That you she know? was the best. Yeah. No, that's what I want Wyatt to say, <laughs> not people. Hey, it's like, we got to go back to it because you know you crack me up, though. What? And we're going to go back to the Lexi. Okay. Because it's like when you be keeping Wyatt, <laughs> you're like, Wyatt, raise your hands and say hallelujah. Oh, yeah. Thing. Praise God. That's right. I got to get it in him. Yeah. I got to get it in Wyatt. Wyatt's going to be on the playground <laughs> speaking in tongues. <laughs> that's right. That's right. Because I felt like, you know, raising my kids, you know, I grew up in a, in a in a in an era where they were very strict, mm -hmm. and I realized you realize when you get older mm -hmm. that it was such a good idea for them to be very strict. Sure. But but you know you think oh, okay it doesn't really take all of that you know I don't have to do this with my kids I don't have to do this yeah. and I was wrong. Mm. You know, um, the more you can pour into your kids, the better off they're gonna be. Mm. The, the more they can be in church, the more they can hear that word, the more you're praying over them, the more you watch who they're hanging out with, the more, you don't have to be nervous, but being strict is a good idea yeah. because the enemy comes to kill, steal, and destroy, and he's after our children. And so if I had it to do all over again, I would be a little bit more stricter, mm. you know? Um, and, and, and if you talk to them, they'll probably tell you I was strict <laughs> 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 compared to a lot of the parents around us. Right. but. But you're there to protect them and to make sure they become everything that God has called them to be. And so I think parents need to understand the, the responsibility that comes with parenting. You just, mm -hmm. parenting is not just having a baby. Anybody can have a baby. Say that one more time yeah, but to be, the yeah. in, in the camera. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> parenting is not just having a baby, right? And you need the Holy Spirit to help you how to be, how to be a father, how to be a mother. Mm -hmm. And I would have really prayed about it more. Mm -hmm. And not just raise them in the way, not even raise them just the way I was raised because they're different. Right. You know what I'm saying? And so, so with Wyatt, yeah, I am like speaking all over, I'm speaking life all in him. Yeah. I'm praying in the spirit. You know, he's yeah. screaming. I'm like, uh-uh, in the name of Jesus. Now, what's wrong? I'm speaking to your spirit today. <laughs> I'm speaking to your spirit. Jesus is Lord. And he'll look at me like, like yeah, okay. he is Lord. <laughs> Yeah, so he will be all that God has called him yes, to be. His parents be. and his grandparents are gonna make sure of that. Yeah. So, so yeah, they're precious, and they're and they're. You have to mold them and shape their hearts, and you have to protect them, so that they will be secure in the things of God. Yeah. You know, and what they have to fight nowadays. Oh my God. Yeah. You know, you don't want them to be confused. You mm -hmm. don't want them to be taken advantage of, and God doesn't either. Yeah. But He uses us as His hands and feet. And he's in, he entrusts us with them to raise them up in the fear of God. Yeah. So that, I said it the other day when I spoke um, at Lakewood, it's so important that when we raise our kids, they get used to the light. Mm -hmm. You know, they, they know what's right, they know what's wrong. Mm -hmm. So when they go to school, when they go out into the public, they'll recognize what's wrong. Mm -hmm. 
You know what I'm saying? Yes, they won't ma'am. second guess themselves. They'll be like, this is wrong yeah. because I know what the light is. I yeah. know what right is, you know? And yeah. that's the job of a parent. That is Does awesome. that make sense? It does, and I appreciate that. Yeah, but the legacy, the yeah. legacy, I, I just want people to see Jesus in me. I want mm. them to say that that was, she was a true believer. She was a true disciple of Jesus Christ. Mm. I think that's the greatest legacy you can leave. And I want to make sure I deposit everything that God has put into me, into those who are coming after me. Yeah. Uh, Miles Monroe encouraged us to, the late Miles Monroe, the late mm-hmm. pastor Miles Monroe, mm-hmm. I want to honor him, yeah. uh, encouraged us to die empty. Die empty. Yeah. Yes, he did, because he yeah. said the richest place in the world mm-hmm. is the, the graveyard. Mm-hmm. Like, that, was, that was deep. It was deep, and, it, and that's the one quote that keeps me like, I'm going to rob the grave mm, Come on. of what God put in me. That's right. You Go know? for it. And your legacy of you just pouring out that people see the Jesus in you. Yeah. So, That's Pastor Cece, thank you so much. You're like, so welcome. I, and, I, and I'm so proud of you. Oh, I'm thank you. so proud of you. As your spiritual mom, I know you're, you have a beautiful natural mom, and she's a spiritual mom as well. Yeah. And uh, she did a great job. I think you're an awesome man of God. And... I, I just feel like your future is much brighter than what mm. you could ever imagine. So, honored to be here. <laughs> so glad. And you're here. very proud of all that you've done. And yeah, God's going to use you greatly. Thank you, Pastor. Cece. You got it. I appreciate it, <laughs> y'all. What in the world? <laughs> Cece Wilders, pass Cece to me because I respect my elders, right? <laughs> That's y'all, right. We have to die empty. Mm-hmm. But we have to live for Jesus and everything that he put in us that we were put on this earth to do. Mm-hmm. That's legacy. So, y'all, be a good friend. Raise your children. <laughs> be well. Go impact the world because you have purpose. Be sure to like and subscribe right now, and we will see you next time on the I Live Now Show.